Let's try this one again. I am so sorry. I had put up the video realizing that somehow my OBS had my uh, mic totally shut off. So uh, anyway, if there's any issues or any corrections, I'll put in the description below. So we have these two blocks are connected by a string and block one is on a horizontal surface and attached to a spring that's unstretched length. Frictional forces are negligible in the pulley's axle in between the block and the surface. So no friction. Block two is released from rest and moves downward momentarily before coming to rest. So we have the masses, we have the spring constant, we have the distance before it momentarily comes to rest. That's not equilibrium. Doesn't mean the net force is zero. Okay, block two starts from rest and speeds up, then slows down momentarily, comes to rest at position below its initial position. In terms of only the forces directly exerted on block two, explain why block two initially speeds up and explain why it slows down momentarily to a slop. So if I look at the net force, initially it goes down because the gravitational force is bigger than the tension. So initially, and they won't only want the forces on block two. Initially, M2G is greater than tension. Therefore, it accelerates downward. As the spring stretches, the, the tension force pulls back. The T will increase until, well, increases, and, and eventually the acceleration is upward. Right now, just because the acceleration matches doesn't mean that it's going to stop. That just means the net force is zero. It's going to stop accelerating. So now the acceleration is upward, and that causes it to slow down until it stops entirely. Stops. Now derive an expression for delta y the block travels before momentarily coming to rest. Express your answers in the k0, m2, m2. So this one you cannot do with kinematics. And the reason you can't do with kinematics is because the force is changing, right? Part of your answer should realize that the force is changing. Therefore, I cannot talk about this from a kinematics point of view because if the force is changing, the acceleration is changing. So what that means is if the acceleration is changing then, um, what that means is uh, we can't use kinematics. That requires constant acceleration. So what we can do is do it in terms of energy. Energy of the blocks plus spring plus earth system. So before, let's talk about all of them. Before, before we release it, right, the spring potential energy is zero because the spring is not stretched. The kinetic energy is also zero. And then if we set, and then, and then uh, because it's not moving yet, and then if we set this part to be h equals zero, then the um, gravitational potential energy is just equal to m2 g delta y. And technically, there's some potential energy here. You could call it m1 g h if you want. Let's just call that x. We'll just call that m1 g x. But hopefully, we're not going to need that m1 g x. That potential energy is not going to change because basically... When it moves to the right, the spring potential energy is one half kx squared. But what's the x? Well, if it falls a distance delta y, it's going to move to the right a distance delta y. Right? Because they're going to move in tandem like that. The kinetic energy is still zero because it is momentarily at rest, right? Momentarily coming to rest. The kinetic energy is zero there. And so the gravitational potential energy, well, the gravitational potential energy, this blocks down here. So it has no gravitational potential energy, but this guy, M1, is still up there, M1GX. So we're going to say the total energies are the same between the two because there's no work happening. So I would say M2G delta Y plus M1GX. You don't need this M1GX, by the way. I'm just using that to illustrate to you guys. Uh, it's K0. I should put K0 here. Delta Y squared plus M1GX that these guys are just going to cancel. And so you get M2G delta Y equals one half K zero delta Y squared. Uh, you can divide by delta Y because I know delta Y is not zero. So then delta Y is going to be two M2G over K zero like that. Um, yeah, so all of that I just put here, right? So this is delta Y. Let me just repeat it right here in case I need that. 
Okay, and I used only these variables. I would just double check that. Yep, indicate whether the total mechanical energy of the block spring system changes, the block moves to downward. If it's the whole system does not change, there is no external forces that are doing work, that do work on the system. Work is necessary for a change in the total mechanical energy system. So do work on the system. All right. Uh, that's probably all you need to say. You could elaborate more on why there's no work. The only external forces are going to be like the normal force and the force from here. But the normal force moves perpendicular to the motion, so that's not going to happen. And then there's a force here, but he doesn't move, so he's not going to do any work either. All right. Uh, consider the system that includes the spring, earth, both blocks, and the string, but not the surface. Let the initial state be when the blocks are at rest just before they start moving. Let the final state be when the blocks first momentarily come to rest. Diagram A is the vertical bar chart. The shaded bars represent the potential energy of the spring and gravitational potential of the blocks earth system. Uh, okay, so here we conserved energy, but now we have a scenario where it's non-negligible friction. Complete diagram B. So basically, because of friction, it's going to cause a loss in the energy. The spring energy is going, it's still going to stretch, right, like that. But the, and the gravitational energy is still going to be zero, but it's going to be at a lower height because we're going to, this difference here is going to be the work done by friction. So you needed some part where it's lower, and then this is zero. And then other than that, that should be the same. As long as this part here is probably lower than this part, then you're probably good.